So now I'm just going to do another uh, quick video. Nothing uh, terribly exciting. This is the battery I used in my last video. So this is lithium iron phosphate and lithium iron phosphate have uh, cells that are 3.2 volts. This battery has four of those cells. Each cell is 16 amp hours but there's four of the cells connected in series so their voltages add up to 12.8. Uh, so that's the nominal voltage. When it's fully charged it's higher. These uh, LiFePo uh, batteries you should be able to charge them to 14.6 volts and you should not discharge them below uh, 10 volts. You don't want to exceed those range. You can stay anywhere between those ranges uh, for safety and also if you don't go all the way fully charged, fully discharged, they last longer. So in any case there's the model number but I can't find the data sheet for this particular uh, battery. So since it's uh, 16 amp hours probably you want to keep currents and stuff to about uh, one tenth of what you will see for a 100 amp hour uh, battery. A lot of those data sheets are available but uh, in any case we're gonna stay in low voltage ranges. So as I said before 12.8 volts is the nominal voltage. The uh, watt hours is the uh, voltage times the amp hours. Uh, pretty pretty straightforward there. Now when I was making my last video we had a little problem charging it. I didn't really address it so we're gonna look at that in more detail in this video. In my last video we used this power supply to power a voltage booster which is rated for a minimum of uh, 9 volts uh, coming in and we set it to output 14.2 volts going out. That wasn't enough voltage. I should have uh, put it a little bit higher. It worked. would have worked a little bit better. But in any case, I didn't need that voltage booster really at all. Going the wrong way with that. I could just set the power supply to 14.2 uh, volts and then set the current to whatever I want. If I keep going down, it'll go to its lowest value, which is actually okay right now. So I'm going to turn the uh, power on and as I said before, we could just connect it directly to the battery. Now, you have to make sure the voltage doesn't exceed the maximum voltage for the power supply and uh, also the uh, current and whatnot. That's why we limit current. So it's putting a little current through right now, uh, 10 milliamps, uh, but we can tell when it hit the current limit by seeing CC up there for the uh, constant current. So I want to uh, hit set. There we go and look at the voltage there. So the battery is probably about 13.66 uh, volts. For a more accurate measurement we can set the meter there, multimeter, and take the measurement. So remember too also at the higher current some of the voltage will be across the uh, wires and stuff. It won't uh, quite all be the battery voltage as far as the power supply is concerned but uh, we're pretty close there. Maybe we're losing a bit but that's not as accurate as the multimeter. If I turn the power off it goes down for some reason that looks to be uh, close to a diode drop. Maybe that's related. So in any case we uh, are going to uh, raise the constant current. So as long as the battery voltage is lower than the voltage we want to apply that's what we want to apply. That's what's actually being outputted because we're limiting current. You're gonna see that uh, as I raise the voltage it's gonna bump up a little bit because of the resistance of the wires and uh, whatnot. So that's not uh, totally the uh, battery voltage. But in uh, any case, we're going to go to, uh, let's go to 1.1 amp right there. And so you're going to see voltage rise over time. Now, in the last video, I was using a voltage booster. The voltage should not be rising that fast. And then it dropped out. That's telling me there's a uh, problem right now. So actually let's go and uh, take a look at uh, the current that we're getting. So it looks like the current's holding alright kind of bouncing around a little bit not uh, completely steady. So that voltage is rising quicker than I think it should. I think one of the cells has a higher voltage than it should have. So we're gonna come back when this uh, stops charging when it gets to 14.2 all right, it. Uh, I I really just came back. It got to 14.2 really quick. It's not constant current anymore. You can see current drop down uh, really quick. So this is literally only seconds after I cut that last shot. And so, 
what this is telling me is that the uh, BMS, the battery management system board, I don't want resistance, I want uh, voltage, it's telling me that it stopped the charging. So when it stops the charging, you still got that voltage build up because the power supply is attached. So it says 14.1, which is interesting. And uh, that's what it should say. Pretty close to that if we remove the uh, power supply. And uh, it actually isn't uh, too bad, but you can see that it is going down uh, fairly quickly. Let's come back in about a minute. So now a minute has gone by. We'll take the uh, voltage measurement. And there you can see we're down into 13.97. So when you completely charge lithium batteries all the way to 100%, their voltage does tend to drift down, but not uh, this quickly. You know, it takes it takes hours, and uh, and I'm not sure even how much the lithium iron phosphates go down over hours. But uh, since we we're probably going to get back to that voltage that we started with, we didn't put all that much current in to charge it. You really saw most of what we did to charge this, and it should have taken you know uh, maybe an hour or something because it was still uh, fully charged. So. That tells me that one of the batteries is getting to its maximum voltage of a 3.65 volts. You put four of those in series, completely charged, a 3.65 times four, then you get that 14.6 absolute max that we were shooting for. We're not even going for the absolute max, and uh, it uh, hit its limit already where it stopped charging. So that tells me one of the cells got to where it couldn't charge anymore because they don't stay balanced automatically. If there's a voltage difference, that voltage difference stays and it may go up or down due to uh, various differences, whatever that uh, difference is. But when you charge them, they tend to uh, follow each other. The higher one stays a little bit higher and uh, when you go down, it stays a little bit higher. And something may be causing it to get worse over time or maybe better over time and uh, you may not have that problem at some point when they're equal, but uh, as long as they're unbalanced, they're going to stay unbalanced unless there's balance protection uh, circuitry in here that adjusts it over time, which I don't think it does, maybe because this is a cheap model. So now I thought I would wrap this up by doing the uh, math. If we got the four cells to 14.2 volts, because their voltage does kind of bump up a little bit as you're putting uh, current into them, so we assume that one of them hit 3.65 volts. That is probably when the BMS said we have to stop charging or it will exceed that voltage. So I did the math. That means the other three cells would have an average of almost a 3.52 volts. So uh, not a whole lot lower, but enough where we couldn't get to the 14.6 uh, uh, volts without overcharging the uh, one cell. So. Uh, for safety reasons, you can just uh, purposely only charge them to uh, 14 volts and uh, in case your BMS fails or something, you have a lot less chance of overcharging a cell. So in any case, this is all this stuff you learn when you're learning about batteries. It wasn't really meant to be a complete instructional, just kind of a uh, warning. And uh, so hopefully you still enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.